In order to radiate something, you must contain it in the first place. Hello, I'm Jasmine and I love being a woman. I think every woman should love being a woman. We have been blessed with an unbridled, innate feminine essence that allows us to be profoundly warm, intuitive, compassionate, soft, and magnetic. I feel that as women, we do a disservice to ourselves and we lose power when we try to imitate men and try to do as men do because as feminine beings, we pull so much of our purpose from our feminine activity. I think people have this misconception that femininity is equated with weakness, which is emphatically not the case. To a certain extent, I do understand why people have that misconception. It's because, you know, men are bigger, they're physically stronger, especially in upper body and they're broader, and that is great. Sexual dimorphism is a wonderful thing. The fact that the two sexes have opposite yet complementary energy is a beautiful thing. And men and women interact the best together when they each practice their natural, viscous, masculine and feminine energy. I have faith that the two polar energies are an intentional creation. Ow, I just cracked my neck. <laughs> now, being feminine is not just about, you know, wearing dresses, jewelry, and liking the color pink. In fact, I've met women who were not wearing anything particularly eye-catching or dressed in any particular feminine way, but they still radiated so much feminine energy through the way that they interacted with people, the way that they looked at you, how they talked to you, how they moved, how they carried themselves. So any woman can look feminine, but without feminine essence, feminine external adornment is useless because in order to radiate something, you must contain it in the first place. Now this brings me into what femininity actually is. What is femininity in essence? When you think of a woman, what exactly separates her from a man? What do you think of besides the physical? Personally, I think of a certain gentleness, soft-heartedness, and a certain magnetism that transcends anything physical. I think of kindness, gentleness, openness, softness, and a certain sincerity and a lively energy that again is so magnetic and so genuine that it flows out of the woman and the people around her feel that sincerity and her kindness and her genuine care for others. And those people cannot help but care for her as well and can't help but want to be around her. Being feminine is also about being instead of doing. It's about knowing when to rest, knowing when to relax and let go. It's about receiving and feeling. It transcends time and culture. Every culture has their ideal feminine figure. Let's for a second take handwriting for example. What looks more feminine in your opinion? Cursive confident loops or rigid all caps? Femininity is free flowing and round and soft. If you're a woman, you have feminine energy naturally, but in this fallen world where vulnerability, openness, and kindness is so often taken advantage of, you may feel a need to put up your masculine shield to protect yourself. However, you can absolutely protect yourself without compromising your feminine essence, which I'll get into here as well. And I do think it's important for people to have both masculine and feminine traits because if you are a woman, you have to be you know, discerning or you're going to waste your energy. And you sometimes have to be assertive, but just as well, if you're a woman, it's of course natural for your core to lean feminine. And you very well may feel happier and more aligned and more peaceful and more yourself by indulging in your natural femininity. So let's begin. Before we begin, I just want to say that I am so close to my goal of a thousand subscribers. So if you want to help me reach my goal and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. But either way, thank you so much for watching. In my opinion, the easiest way to truly radiate pure feminine essence is by being more receptive. Femininity is very receptive. Even think about our sexual anatomy as women. Our vagina receives, right? We receive the man sexually. Right? So why wouldn't that apply to other parts of our lives as well? Think about when you go out to dinner with a man. There's a reason why women appreciate it so much when a man offers to pay for dinner, pulls their chair out back and forward, offers to drive, opens the door for them. Gallantry is such an amazing thing and it's so tragic that it's such an... A, 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 I can't talk. <laughs> Gallantry is an amazing thing, and it's so tragic that it's in such low supply these days. Now, although being receptive is feminine, you still have to set boundaries for yourself to ensure no one can take advantage of you or try to give you something that you don't really want. So try to establish what intentions someone has when they try to give you something. And if you believe that they actually are being genuine in their desire to give you something that will truly benefit you, that they're being sincerely generous, then I suggest that you accept their generosity and take it with gratitude. If someone you trust is giving 
giving you a compliment, say that they, you know, think your hands are pretty, for instance. I suggest not to, you know, ex make excuses by saying that, oh, they usually look terrible, I just got a manicure. Instead, simply say something like, oh, thank you so much for saying that, I really appreciate it, you're so kind, and leave it there. If you feel the pull to give them another compliment in return, then of course go ahead and do it genuinely, but I suggest you really try to accept the goodness they're trying to give you. If someone you trust offers you a hand with something at work, say, you know, you're carrying something heavy and they just want to help you out, instead of brushing off their desire to help you as they assume that you're weak or them trying to prove that they're stronger than you, instead accept the gesture and accept their help. It doesn't mean you can't do it yourself, it just may mean that they want to give you some good energy and they want to just interact with you because you are a magnetic feminine being. So if someone is giving you something, whether it be, you know, a compliment, some help or a gift, if it's someone you can trust and you're in a safe environment to receive something, then I suggest you take it. That will really help you radiate feminine energy. Number two, give open positive energy to those around you. Now again, you must proceed with caution. Don't carelessly flaunt your willingness to give loads of positive energy to everyone you see in a given day because that will just exert you and you're more likely to have someone take advantage of your openness. Setting boundaries and knowing when to say no will save your femininity because saying yes to everything will just make you resentful and close you up. But you know, try to make people, even strangers in safe spaces, feel as though you care about them and people generally. When you're at the grocery store, for instance, and you're checking out your groceries, smiling at the cashier, asking them how their day was, giving them good, pure energy that lets them know that although they're a stranger, you still care enough about them and people in general to ask how they are and simply be a positive magnetic presence. What really makes someone magnetic truthfully is their ability to make people feel as though they are genuinely cared about. Why wouldn't someone want to be around someone else who genuinely cares about them and other people? If a coworker says hello to you, say hi back with a genuine smile on your face. If someone you trust comes in for a hug, give them a nice hug back with a smile. This communicates to them that you care about the person, you're happy that they're there with you, and will also make them want to be around you more. Now please try to be genuine in this respect, again, if you want to read feminine essence, you must contain it. It's not just a costume that you put on to manipulate people. This is not necessarily something that you can change in yourself overnight, but setting healthy boundaries that keep you safe while simultaneously being kind and caring to those around you, especially those that you know and can trust, this can really make you a more feminine being, a happier person, and will also make those around you love to be around you. Now, feel free to skip this next chapter because I've talked about it a lot already, but I just want to really emphasize how important it is to set healthy boundaries. Setting boundaries as a feminine woman is imperative if you don't want to compromise your femininity. Yes, being yielding is feminine, but you must know when it is safe to indulge in those parts of your femininity, which I elaborated on in my last video. As feminine beings, we're intuitive, so try to use your natural intuition to, to try to establish whether or not someone is trying to offend you, provoke you, or even hurt you. Personally, if someone is being aggressive towards me, I'll simply say something like, I don't appreciate the way you're talking to me right now or I don't appreciate that tone or I feel as though you're not hearing me right now shuts it down it immediately shuts down their attitude and oftentimes they apologize for their poor behavior instead of stooping to their level and also trying to be you know offensive and engaging in ad hominem either remove yourself from the situation so that you can get somewhere where you feel safe because femininity thrives in safety, or if you're safe enough to address what offended you in no uncertain terms without the person becoming physical or aggressive towards you, say exactly how you felt when they offended you and how you interpreted what they said to you. If they continue to provoke you or be aggressive towards you, then I suggest to remove yourself from the situation safely. Number four, be flexible and less rigid. I'm not talking about physical flexibility. I'm talking about being flexible in your plans, in your in your day-to-day. -day. Try to be more open to a slight difference difference in your schedule. Spontaneity is very feminine because femininity is soft and free-flowing and being very stringent in your day-to-day -day plans may give you a bit more of a rigid quality instead of a softer quality. Now personally I do enjoy routine, it keeps me grounded, but being open to doing something spontaneous or if someone asks you 
need to change your schedule slightly around. If you can accommodate it easily, I suggest you to be a bit more open to it. Of course, don't be, you know, a doormat or a stepping stone. Don't bend over backwards to accommodate someone's crazy schedule change. But if you can be flexible sometimes, be more spontaneous. Don't think of a slight change in your plans as an interruption, but more as an opportunity to have some versatility in your day. That will really help you radiate femininity. Number five, resensitize yourself. Femininity is gentle and feminine women are very sensitive towards themselves and other people. So this may be a given, but try to be more considerate towards the needs of others. When you ask someone how they are and they tell you that they're not feeling so great, listen to them intently and empathize with them. Don't just brush off their feelings and say, oh, you'll get over it or no pain, no gain. Make them feel heard and that they know you feel for them and you want to make them feel better especially if this is someone you care about, make sure they know that they can come to you when they feel upset. Oftentimes, someone just wants to be listened to and having a shoulder to cry on and being there for that person, making sure that they know that you're there for them and you won't make them feel bad for airing their feelings out to you or you won't just brush them off. This is feminine activity. If someone you care about is sick or needs emotional support and you're able to nurture them and take care of them, do it. There is nothing more feminine than being nurturing. Number six, speak kindly of others and don't gossip. Feminine beings are warm and compassionate. When you speak ill of others and attempt to disparage them, you begin to compromise your femininity. Of course, if someone speaks ill of you, please stand up for yourself. Again, femininity is not weak. Number six, seven? I'm sorry, I don't remember. <laughs> Take time for yourself to just be. You cannot be feminine without taking the time for yourself to just be and relax. Femininity is in part about being, so make sure that there's time in your day for you to simply clear your thoughts and simply take care of yourself and relax. Whether that's through meditation, stretching, reading a book, taking a warm bath, you don't really have to do anything, but you know, partaking in something that makes you forget about your worries and anxieties, that makes you feel present and safe, is honestly crucial for everyone, but it'll really help you tap into your femininity. Next, practice gentleness and compassion. Whether you're dealing with others or dealing with yourself, approaching difficult, frustrating situations with gentility gentleness and compassion can really help diffuse tension and anxieties. It can help anyone, including yourself, feel more safe. Say you just made a huge mistake, like you forgot to save a huge file on your computer and your computer crashes, or someone just accidentally spilled something on your favorite dress. I know it's incredibly difficult to do, but try not to explode into frustration and anger. Take a deep breath, understand that although the situation is frustrating and maybe painful, exploding into anger is only going to make the situation worse. Let yourself feel frustrated, of course. I'm not saying you should be indifferent towards painful situations, but try not to let your anger and frustration consume you and throw you into a state of complete disorder. Approach the situation realistically, with self-control, compassion, and gentleness towards yourself and others. In chaotic situations, in painful situations, focus on what you can control. If someone has accidentally hurt you or made you frustrated, remind yourself that perhaps it was not intentional, and to explode into anger is not going to fix the situation at all. Express your frustration in a controlled manner so that they know that you're upset and that they can try to rectify it properly. If you've done something to yourself, be gentle towards yourself. Unless you're a masochist, you didn't mean to hurt yourself. So please, try not to let your anger consume you. Learn how to control your emotions under difficult circumstances so that you can express them appropriately and so that you can practice gentleness and compassion. Bonus, cut toxic people out of your life that are making you feel unsafe. Again, femininity flourishes in safe environments where it's safe to be open, soft, vulnerable, gentle, and free-flowing. So if there's anyone in your life who makes you feel emotionally or physically unsafe, you're going to get used to having your masculine shield up all the time, which is going to compromise your femininity. And if you really feel as though being feminine is who you are at your core, then you have to cut that person out of your life. There's nothing wrong with operating through masculinity sometimes as a woman. It's just not healthy when you have the masculine shield up so often that it diminishes your ability to be feminine. Cutting toxic people out of your life and ensuring that you don't put yourself in unsafe situations because that's the only way to make sure that you're safe, those are all ways to nurture your feminine essence. Before I wrap up, I want to also make sure that you know that everyone has dimensions to their personality. If you are naturally a bit more assertive and have dark humor, I tend to 
really enjoyed dry dark humor and perhaps you are very initiative for instance that does not at all mean that you are not also very feminine you can absolutely be in tune with both energies without compromising your feminine essence and in fact it is so necessary to be able to tap into both and that goes for both men and women it's just that as i mentioned earlier it's natural for women to feel more comfortable being mainly feminine just as it's more natural for men to be more comfortable being mainly masculine well everyone, I really hope this helps someone really tap into the feminine essence because virtuous femininity is truly so amazing and important and can really enact so much positive change. I'm definitely going to be making more content about femininity and masculinity, so if you want to see more of that, please make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jasmine Elise and goodbye.